I want to get a little bit more vulnerable with you so you can get to know me. And by getting to know me, you get to know the ministry and how I can serve you. All right. So back some time ago, I'm about 58 years old, back in my 30s, and probably for a huge percentage of my entire life, I was a health addict. <laughs> you know, you can have an addiction to even things that sound good and look good, but they're still addictions and they're still strongholds. For me, it was health, anything pertaining to health, anything regarding health. This included eating organic, trying several different diets to include veganism, vegetarianism, raw food, and anything else. What it is, is it's actually self-absorption. That's really what it is. And it wasn't until I really got to know the truth of God's word that I was able to break free from the deception that was holding my health hostage because that's what strongholds do. So let me go and read this very vulnerable uh, blog to you. I'm gonna read a portion of it and then I'm gonna uh, talk about it with you in the hopes that I can inspire you to get the help that you need. All right, so I'm gonna be looking at my notes while I read it real quickly. But basically one morning while I was in the kitchen in the midst of my usual morning routine, I heard an almost audible voice of the Holy Spirit saying to me, you don't trust me, do you? It was actually a question and it wasn't audible in the sense that it was a tangible voice. It was more in my heart because by this time I had already been struggling a lot in my health. So of course I answered just like Peter did. <laughs> you know, I felt like Peter in that moment when he said, Peter, do you love me? Right? What a question. I felt like exactly like Peter did. And I said, well, of course, Lord, I trust you. That's a logical answer. I mean, I had been on my journey now with the Lord for several years, and I wanted to believe that I trusted the Lord, but he challenged me. And we have to be willing to be challenged from the Holy Spirit, because it's only when he does this that we can come to the knowledge of truth regarding these strongholds in our life that are holding us back. So basically I'm reading again. And as I did, I realized in that moment that I had been lying to myself and to God all along. The sad reality was that I had to come to the conclusion that I really didn't trust God. I'd convinced myself that I did, but in all actuality, if I was being totally honest, I really didn't trust him, at least for my health. So reading more, my cabinet was literally a shrine, a shrine of vitamins, protein powders, elixirs, herbal remedies, protein shakes, youth potions. Come on, ladies. How many of you can be honest enough to relate? And let's just say it's not supplements. Let's go up to our bathroom counter and look at our anti-aging. What a deception that is. Let's look at our counter and look at the slew of products we have for our hair, for our skin, and just about everything else. So as I'm sharing this with you, think about a stronghold in your life that the Lord is challenging you to address. So reading more, this is what my cabinet looked like. And what it's important to understand is that a, a person will say to me, what's wrong with wanting to take care of your health? I mean, after all, your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. And we are supposed to honor and respect our bodies so that we can be useful. I get that, but mine was way extreme. And if we're really being honest again, many of us women have this same type of spirit. It's actually an unclean spirit that leads to some type of addiction. That's what a stronghold is. Something that is influenced over our mind and over our decisions and over our free will. It might not be supplements. It might not be your anti-aging products. But what if it's shopping? How about shopping on Amazon? How about shoes? How about the need to buy anything designer? How about coffee? So as I'm sharing this with you, understand that the whole purpose of this is so that you can see if you can find and expose a stronghold in your life. All right, so basically I have the, the definition, I'm gonna be reading this from my notes. A stronghold is anything that has more power and influence over ourselves than God does. Now let me take it a little bit further in the definition. Another definition from dictionary.com. 
defines a stronghold as a place or a cause of belief. Something that we believe is strongly defended or upheld. In other words, if you're going to address my supplements, I'm going to say, oh yeah, come on, right? You're hitting where it hurts because the Bible says that there's a way that seems right, but always will end up leading to destruction. And we are not supposed to defend strongholds. We are supposed to demolish them. That's what the word tells us. So anyway, in the Greek, a stronghold can be translated as a prison. And I don't know if you've ever felt what that's like but I was literally in a prison. Everywhere I'd go to eat, I had to take a bunch of pills to break down gluten, to give me the nutrients I thought my body needed because I didn't understand that my body was already created fearfully and wonderfully and created in the image of God. So I had a lot of stronghold thoughts that created a lot of stronghold feelings that created a lot of stronghold decisions and bad habits. And the Lord was addressing these to me. This was uh, the, all of these things with me because this was part of my deliverance journey is coming to the end of self and the self-destruction that I had imposed on my life and putting myself and making myself fully dependent on God. And I believe that's one of the most serious strongholds for women is coming to the end of themselves because women like to control, they like to manage, and they like to believe they have some sense of stability. It's kind of like a protective mechanism. Uh, so anyway, going further, I'm going to keep reading. Then the Lord convicted me that I was also being double-minded, double-minded. Even though I had been studying and meditating on scriptures regarding healing that was already paid for and promised and provided by Jesus Christ, I was still hedging my bet with my health just in case God was not the provider that I intended him to be or that I had imagined him to be. See, in terms of provider, there's a lot of us out there that are stuck on our healthcare provider. Just think about that phrase for a second. You know, in the office, at work, in our career, we have a stronghold and it's called a benefit, a work benefit, where we actually get health benefits and we actually get to choose our own healthcare provider, which takes the name of provider away from God, the ultimate provider, and puts it on man, man's wisdom, and man's system, which is flawed. A healthcare provider in a healthcare system cannot heal you and cannot prevent disease. Only the provider can, the true provider, and his name is God. So I had a healthcare provider that allowed me to inundate myself with all of these fake realities of what I considered healing. So I'm going to keep reading from this blog that I wrote. And God even lovingly reminded me of past arguments. This was such a stronghold that my husband and I would argue about the amount of money I was spending monthly on my health care budget. I was spending anywhere between $700 and $1,000 on supplements. In fact, online, I would see something, I would get captivated by it, I would get drawn in, and before you know it, I had my credit card out because it was promising me a fountain of youth or was promising me some result that was probably looking back now very unrealistic. And that's a lot of women. We're out there chasing these things and they don't exist. It's like chasing vapor. So I was actually walking in my own fleshy ways and my wisdom for so long that I'd become totally insensitive to the spirit of God and the prompting and leading by his conviction. And as I wrote, I was mainly eroding my ability to believe and trust God fully to replace the health and healing protocols I had to give him the rightful place of being my actual healer. That's double-minded. So I was hedging my bet two ways. Lord, I want to believe that you are my healer. That is one of your names. That is one of the uh, parts of our inheritance that you provide for. But just in case, I'm going to hedge my bet, take control, and make sure I have a backup plan. I believe this is one of the reasons that I ended up with severe autoimmune. I don't believe that's what caused it, but I believe that's what allowed Hashimoto's and some of these other things to attach very strongly to my body. Uh, because a lot of these things, a lot of these autoimmune diseases are caused by fear and anxiety. 
and I had a fear, a fear of what if I don't take this supplement before I eat a certain food. I had a fear about certain foods, about eating, eating certain foods. So all of this fear, all of this angst, all of this uneasiness, can you imagine what it was doing internally, the dis-ease it was causing before it had the ability to create disease? So I'm just gonna share with you real quickly that through the deliverance journey, deliverance is not about casting out spirits. I'm gonna share a video on why I no longer do one-on-one -on -one deliverance so-called sessions. Deliverance is about heeding the voice of the Holy Spirit, exposing deception, receiving truth, being humble, having a repentant of heart, and being able to see the strongholds in your life that are sabotaging you and sabotaging all of the promises of God that we have as his children. God is not withholding anything from us. We are actually becoming an enemy to the things that God has for us. So what I had to do in that moment is I had to make a decision. And this was a hard decision because in that cabinet wasn't just one month's worth of supplements. I would say there were probably thousands of dollars of supplements all lined up beautifully, all in perfect order. When I used to go to that cabinet in the morning, I'd open it and I was so proud of the way I was in control of my health. I used to be the health guru and the health expert and I prided myself on that. Anytime someone needed some health advice, I was that encyclopedia and I got puffed up. And then of course, you know, all of this backfired, of course, because I was getting more sick. I wasn't actually getting healthier. So then I felt like a hypocrite. Uh, but bottom line, here's what I had to do. The Lord challenged me in that moment and he said, are you ready to fully put your trust in me? Now, I didn't know what he was going to ask ne next, but I willingly committed and I said, absolutely, yes, I am. Then he said, get rid of everything in that cabinet. You can imagine the expression on my face, <laughs> pulling out a trash bag and getting rid of thousands of dollars of supplements and then feeling a little bit of that guilt because my husband had been another voice that was telling me, hey, that you're taking this too far, this has gone too far. But here was what was so refreshing. When we heed that voice and when we are obedient and when we do not resist truth, things become easier. At first, putting those supplements in the trash bag, I felt like I was putting 25 pound dumbbells in there. Oh, oh no, not this one, not this one. I'd even hide a few of them thinking I was hiding from the Lord until finally that trash bag was so full and I took it out of the trash and that was the end. That's what it takes to demolish a stronghold. Demolishing a stronghold is going through the entire cabinet and getting rid of any type of temptation and any type of dependency on something that has a stronghold over your mind other than the word of God. So I'm going to tell you real quickly, it wasn't easy. I hated it. I dreaded it. I made sure I even tied the trash bag loosely just in case God wasn't looking and I could go back to the dumpster and kind of in the middle of the night bring the supplements in that I really wanted to keep. But it was really amazing because the trash wasn't coming for an entire week. I had about five to six days of thinking about my decision. Am I sure I want to do this? And you can imagine the war inside of me because this had been a stronghold over many, many years. But God was so faithful and he kept me so strong. That trash, uh, that trash person, you know, the, the trash company, whatever you call it, they came by my house and I'll never forget thinking that, oh my gosh, I have one more chance. But you know what? They picked up that dumpster, they took it away, and that was the end. So back to what a stronghold is. It might not be supplements, it could be exercise. Remember, strongholds aren't always necessarily, they don't look bad, they don't look evil. The Bible said that all things are lawful, but not all things are spiritually beneficial, uh, especially when it comes to our faith and trusting God. So I'm going to ask you, is there a stronghold in your life, something that the Lord has been contending and convicting you of in your heart? If so, I want to challenge you the way the Holy Spirit did me. He challenged me ever so loving, and he said, are you ready to trust me? 
It might be with your finances. It might be with your health. It might be with your marriage. But whatever that is, I promise you, when we listen and when we're responsive and when we have that meekness and that humility to submit, at the very least, to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying, the journey becomes easier. What true freedom is, is it's not the casting out of demons. It's the demolishing of strongholds and every lofty and prideful thing that exalts itself against our true relationship and fellowship with the Holy Spirit. If you're dealing with a stronghold, I'd like you to be open enough to share with me because this is a ministry that can help you demolish those things that are standing in the way of permanent freedom. This, the type of permanent freedom that I received when I cleaned out that cabinet. Since that day many years ago, my health is completely better. I no longer struggle with those illnesses. I don't really need or depend on my so-called health provider from work. <laughs> I can, can actually count on the real provider and my real healer. And what a sense of freedom that that is. What tremendous that deliverance that is to be able to finally depend and trust on God. Leave your comments below and let us know if there's any way we can serve you.